Welcome to Divorce, Dating, and Empowered Living with your host, Rosalind Sedaka. Join Rosalind each week on a journey toward overcoming life's many challenges to achieve peace, empowerment, and positive transformation. It's time to relax, unwind, and transform your life with Rosalind Sedaka. Hello, everyone. This is Rosalind Sedaka. And you are listening to WGSNDB, the Going Solo Network. The show is Divorce, Dating, and Empowered Living. As you may remember, I am a divorce and parenting coach and founder of the Child Centered Divorce Network. I'm also a dating and relationship coach and specialize in mentoring single women and men who are over 40 in finding a healthy, rewarding love relationship. I've written several books and courses on both um, divorce and parenting as well as dating and relationships, and today we're going to be talking about a topic that's very important because it affects us not only while we're going through divorce, but long after divorce and into the new relationships we're trying to attract when we're dating. So we're talking about letting go of grudges anger, resentment, and related emotions after a breakup, after a divorce, and that's really tough. There's a quote from Gandhi, Mahatma Gandhi, that I think is really relevant to this conversation, and he said, the weak can never forgive. Forgiveness is the attribute of the strong. Forgiveness is the attribute of the strong. That means there's something that is very significant within us that gives us the impetus to be able to understand that forgiveness is not a weakness. Forgiveness is really coming from a level of strength, awareness, and consciousness, and what it does is help us move on in our life. There's no doubt that divorce can be a major stumbling block to our happiness and our personal growth in so many ways. And when we hold grudges and resentments, there's no doubt that they're harmful to us in our physical health, as well as in our emotional well-being, and our spiritual health as well. And forgiveness is really a productive way to move forward, to detach from the past, and to let go of the lingering hurts. And the reason why we want to be forgiving is for us, not for the other person. We want to forgive so that we can experience a healthier and more promising future. We can't move on in a healthy way if we're holding on to anger, resentment, hatred, and other negative emotions that are painful for us or that connect us to the pain from the past. It just doesn't work. So it's not uncommon to resent the people closest to us. There's no doubt about it because they have often done us some harm, especially when we're talking about close relationships like divorce. And very often our trust has been violated We've been lied to. We've been betrayed. There's been deceit or abuse. And that, of course, has very often been the reason for the the divorce itself or the breakup of the relationship. But this resentment comes at a big cost to us, and that's what I really want to focus on in this conversation. Because when you can't let go of emotions like hurt and anger, they build and build they get stronger and stronger, and they build into resentments or grudges. And grudges are a feeling that can take hold of us and grow to envelop our entire being, the essence of who we are, and our entire life, and sadly, all of our thoughts. We all know people who are obsessed with hating someone, and it dominates so much of their consciousness that everything is... um, branded in the way of looking at that other person with with hatred. They get obsessed with it, and that's why we see those stories in the headlines about people who get back at their um, former spouses with with violence or need restraining orders. It, It drives you crazy, and it makes everyone around you crazy. Any form of resentment is going to make it difficult to enjoy your life, Enjoy your present moment. And what happens is it defines who you are and how you act. People start labeling you 
and they expect you to behave in certain ways. And these are unconscious ways. These are ways that are not in any way to your advantage, and they're not serving your purpose in enjoying a happy, healthy life ahead. So grudges are very often like mental poison. They don't hurt anyone else but you. And that's the crazy part about anger and resentments and grudges. We're feeling strongly about that other person. Sometimes it's, it's our ex, a former spouse, and other people who may have hurt us. And we are so filled with the poison and the bitterness of that experience, and yet we're not hurting them. The only one that we're hurting is ourselves. And it, it does damage to us in so many ways. But that's an awareness that we have to pick up. It's one that doesn't always come. When we hold on to grudges, it makes us bitter, and that depletes us of our strength and reduces us of health and well-being. So we really can be affected in a physiological way, getting ill, feeling more stressed out, and being overwhelmed with negative emotions that make us a sad, more depressed person. And when we're caught in resentment and anger and hatred following a divorce or any kind of breakup, especially when children are involved, then they, and they are always innocent, those innocent children get caught up in the web that we're weaving because it's inevitable. Your children pick up on things. They feel your conflict. They experience whatever is going on for you in their own way, and they they pick up on on the hatred and it really is negative energy that we're inflicting on them and that they're experiencing and unfortunately our children are helpless to do anything about it our children are helpless to do anything about it so it isn't fair to burden our innocent children with that emotional baggage with our emotional baggage that we're carrying because the truth is It robs them of their childhood. When we are acting in ways that are not positive and focused and showing the very best sides of us, it's affecting our children and robbing them of their childhood. And not only is it affecting them, but it affects the quality of their relationships with other people and your relationship with them. And most importantly, it negatively affects your children's sense of self-esteem. How can you feel good about yourself when you're surrounded by a parent who's depressed or angry or or filled with grudges and, and behaves in ways that are always getting back at other people? We all have to agree that our children deserve better than living with an angry parent. Some of us have had angry parents, and we know what that feeling is like. It isn't pleasant, it isn't good, it isn't nice, and it certainly isn't something we want to inflict on our children. So if you're finding that you may be carrying the baggage of a resentment or or hatred or a grudge of some kind, and it's taking over parts of your life, then you want to be very aware and conscious of looking at yourself And being objective, maybe reaching out for help and support to let go and release that feeling and the behavior that comes with it. Because when you hold on to grudges, it definitely uh, shows even when we're trying to to hide it. Uh, For example, some people um, are very adept at what they call passive-aggressive behavior, and that's behavior that may often appear subtle at first, but it's focused on getting back at the person you're angry at through indirect means. So if you have an ex and you're co-parenting, it may be that you just do little subtle things to sabotage them, change plans and then blame them or surprise them and make them feel uncomfortable, make them look like fools. Um, using a, showing your anger in indirect ways. You may hold back unnecessary necessary information so that they don't have what they need to move ahead with the plans, so to embarrass your, them in front of your children. You may create tense silences 
or when when they ask um, what's wrong or your children ask what's wrong and, and, and you say, oh, nothing, there's nothing wrong, when obviously you're really angry. And those are very typical um, indicators of passive-aggressive manipulation. And it really is manipulation because it's an emotional way of handling things that's designed to hurt the person you want to hurt, but unfortunately um, your innocent children can very often get hurt at the same time. Another example of, of behaviors for people who are unforgiving and holding grudges is making sarcastic remarks whenever you talk to them, there, there's always this level of sarcasm that comes out, and the comments that that are part of sarcasm indicate that that you're annoyed, that you have great intolerance with what's being said or done, and they're usually delivered with a certain kind of intonation in your voice, and um, you could all, very often you'll say, "Oh, I'm just kidding," but but you could read the sarcasm and feel it. Um, behind the comments. And then there's also um, short, abrupt comments that people make when they're really angry and can barely contain being around the other person. And um, those comments also, they show your intolerance, they show your annoyance. Um, there's that, that tone in the voice. And, of course, the children pick up on that. They know when mom and dad are talking kindly to one another, respectfully to one another, and when you're role modeling behavior that you want to be proud of versus this other kind of behavior, it, it sabotages the co-parenting relationship. And the, the conflict is emotionally disturbing to your children and it can definitely negatively impact their behaviors in many destructive ways. And sometimes we're not aware as, pa as parents because we're so caught up in our own emotional drama and the resentment and getting back at that person that we've targeted with so much hatred, we don't see how our children are being affected. And I've spoken to many child psychologists who will talk to me and say they'll, parents will bring in a child because they have behavior problems, and when they, the psychologist talks to the parents, they find out there may have been a divorce one, two, three, four, five or longer years prior to that, but the divorce had never been handled. It's never been resolved between the co-parents, and so there is still so much anger. The children start acting out, and then the parents look at the children, and they say, look at, look at Johnny. He's, he's behaving poorly in school, and, and he's bullying other kids, and um, he's, he's so depressed, and they don't have a clue that it all started with them being poor role models and examples as parents during and long after the divorce. So some of the ways ch kids um, may act out besides bullying and getting poor grades in school, uh, sometimes they get very aggressive in, with other kids. Sometimes they really do go into a, a deep depression and they start regressing in behaviors, bedwetting and things like that, that that are more childlike. Other kids will show examples of low self-esteem and start picking at themselves or cutting or behaviors like that. Others will become very, very angry and in, intolerant or pick on their siblings. And there, there's a whole array of behaviors. If your children are showing poor behavior on any part of the spectrum, it's time to stop and get some help because you do not want to be letting this go for months or years before you, you get a handle on it and give them the help and the support that they certainly, certainly need. So we're going to stop right now for a moment, and then we're going to get right back into the show. Again, this is Rosalind Sadaka with WGSNDB, the Going Solo Network, and you're listening to Divorce, Dating, and Empowered Living. You're listening to WGSNDB, Going Solo Network, Singles Talk Radio Channel, where we take a lighthearted and candid approach to discussions on the journey of relationship loss, divorce, parenting, being single, relationships building, dating, and yes, sex. Join our listeners and begin living your best life. Hello again and welcome back. 
This is Rosalind Sedaka with WGSNDB, Going Solo Network. This, this is the Divorce, Dating, and Empowered Living Show, and we're talking today with me, Rosalind Sedaka, founder of the Child Centered Divorce Network and Divorce and Parenting Coach, and we're talking about some of the consequences of holding a grudge and other kinds of negative emotions after a divorce and not letting go, not being able to learn to forgive and the influence it may be having on yourself as well as on your children. So there are some questions that I suggest that you ask yourself to get more insights about your own behavior, because if you're not sure if any of this relates to you, and it may be that it does on some level, but it's kind of subtle and and most likely your kids aren't picking up on it, um, there's some questions that you can ask yourself just to get more clarity for your own well-being. And the first question is, do you still want to get back at your spouse? For some people, no matter how many years go by, there's still that feeling of resentfulness that they want to get back at their spouse. If they could do little things to hurt them, to diminish their uh, respect to the kids, to hurt their self-esteem, to sabotage their spouse's new and other relationships, then they're on board for that. And that's not a mature attitude to take. No matter how hurt you've been by that person, the best way you can show that you've recovered from the hurt is to move on and be a happier, healthier, better you and not to show the level of hurt and pain that you're you're experiencing. It's better to get out, get some support from a professional, from a coach, from a therapist, from a, a support group, and learn new skills. Another question to ask yourself is, to what extent will you do things to annoy him or her? So if you plot out things to sabotage your co-parent, then you really have not been able to move on, and you're not paying attention to the fact that if you're doing things to annoy your ex, then you're really hurting your, your children at the same time because it has to in- inevitably affect the children's well-being. And kids pick up on these things. And you have to keep asking yourself, what kind of role model am I and have I been for our children during and long after the divorce? What am I showing them about how to handle conflict with other people? Because it, conflict is inevitable in life. And as a parent, you are giving them examples of what to do when things don't go your way, when life throws you a lemon and throws you pain, how do you pick yourself up and, and move on, and how mature are you and how responsible are you as a parent? Another important question to ask yourself is, do you generally tend to hold on to grudges or resentments in general in life? Have you always been someone who holds on to grudges and resentments, and for how long? If you can identify that that's a pattern in your life, maybe this is the time for you to let go, to acknowledge it, and to decide to move on, because it can't be serving you well, not nearly as well as someone who's free of that emotional baggage. And so the last question, and the most important question is, can you let those grudges and resentments and hatreds and other related negative emotions go? Can you let it go? So if you're besieged with intrusive thoughts and feelings about your ex, about your former spouse, and if you're telling yourself how right you are and how wrong they are, and it's a constant dialogue in your head, then you're obviously likely to be developing a grudge because it just builds and builds that internal dialogue. And basically, that's like having a one-sided dialogue with yourself no one else is, is in there to show you another perspective. And so the, your, your feelings get deeper and stronger, and they also can get more distorted. And it makes it harder and harder for you to work on developing a more forgiving ad- attitude and ultimately letting go. So basically what I'm saying is we are our own worst enemy when that happens. Instead of working with the goal of letting go because it lightens the the emotional burden, it lightens the load, we are punishing ourselves. We are punishing our family, our children, 
just for the purpose of hurting that other person, it's like they own us. The, the ties to them have not been cut, and we can't move on into a healthy, conscious, harmonious new relationship if we have that burden, if we're carrying that load. It's impossible to do. So it's really, really important to understand what forgiveness is and how it can be of value to you in moving ahead and moving forward to a brighter future. Forgiveness is about cutting the cord that ties you to the pain and freeing yourself. It's not about condoning the behavior of the person who hurt you. You can still feel the the resentment about and the wrongness about the behavior and the hurts but it's a matter of letting go of the tie to that so that it's not taking over your life so freedom uh so the forgiveness is freedom forgiveness is letting go and cutting that cord it gives you the ability to move ahead and think about other things so it's a liberating experience And that's something that we have to understand. We forgive not for the other person. We forgive for us. Forgiveness is a gift to ourselves. It doesn't mean we've forgotten what happened. It means what happened doesn't own us any longer. We can let it go into the past. We still know what happened. We still understand the wrongs that were done to us, but they don't... own us, they don't have the power to take over our lives. So I've developed an online e-course for managing anger during and after divorce, which is co-created with my sister and partner, Amy Sherman, who's a mental health counselor. Together we created this online course, which includes strategies for expanding your capacity for forgiveness to create more peace in your life, and especially in the life of your children. And that piece is the gift you give yourself so you're free of the pain that surrounds anger and grudges. And you could learn more about the class that we created at angerconflictprograms.com. That's www.angerconflictprograms.com. We've created an 8-hour course and a 12-hour course on managing anger for co-parents. And it's a wonderful gift and wonderful relief to be able to explore the questions, the processes, look at the videos, and look at the examples and understand step-by-step how you can unload the burden from yourself and move on in your life in a a way that's going to be more satisfying and, and more fulfilling. And always remember that The people around you who love you get the benefit of that as well, whether it's your children, whether it's a partner in a new relationship, whoever it is, it just makes your life easier because we can't be the best self we want to be when we're burdened with anger, resentfulness, grudges, and the pain of hurt that we can't let go of. So again, we do this for ourselves. It's a gift for ourselves. And if you are ready to release that anger, you will never regret it because it will just give you a more peaceful and a freer, more liberated life. So I'm going to remind you again about what Gandhi said, the weak can never forgive. Forgiveness is the attribute of the strong. And I highly recommend you consider being as strong as you can be for your own sake, for the sake of your kids, for the sake of those all around you, and look into exploring ways of getting rid of the burden of anger and conflict in your life and opening the door to to greater happiness and freedom and understanding the power, the real power of forgiveness. So this is Rosalind Sadak. I hope this was valuable for you. Again, I'm founder of the Child Centered Divorce Network at childcenteredivorce.com and you've been listening to WGSNDB the Going Solo Network Divorce, Dating, and Empowered Living I suggest you tune in every week because we have wonderful guests who talk about all facets of 
relationships, moving on in life, living the most empowered possible life. And we invite you to join us and glean wonderful new insights from the guests and the experts that we're always talking to on this show. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye for now.